Walking Dead, Brothers Bound, Chapter 5, Convenient Convenience. As the day went on, Lucy and the boys arrived back, and Lucy headed to Willie to debrief. Hey there, Lucy said as she closed the door behind her. Oh, you're back. Good, Willie sighed. Don't worry, I'm a good shot, Lucy told him. I know you are. One of the best, Willie replied. So, are we really going to keep them around? Lucy asked. I think so. They seem pretty sure of themselves, Willie replied as he poured himself a cup of tea. Hun is good. He's a solid shot and knows his way around. Lucy said. So, you are for them staying? Willie asked. I think so. I want to figure out the other one, though. He's a little worn down at the moment, Lucy said with an eye roll. You'll have your chance to check out the competition, Willie chuckled. Hunter walked into Willie's house to find Jake sat up and trying to rotate his arm. Hey man, nice to see you sat up and trying to move, Hunter said. I'm trying to get back in fighting shape. Jake muttered. Dude, it's fine. I got us for a minute. Don't worry. Hunter nodded. I know. Thanks. Jake replied. Don't need to thank me, bro. You're all I have and spent the first several months dragging my ass around, keeping me alive, so I think it's okay if I take the slack for a while. Hunter said. So, how's the village taken to you? Jake asked. Remember the chick with a good shot, uh, Lucy? I think I won her over. Seems like the council takes her word pretty well, so who knows? Hunter shrugged. Suddenly, Ben walked in. Hey, Hunter, good to see you, Ben called out. Hunter nodded at Ben, then turned to Jake. I gotta go. I'll see you soon, okay? Hunter said. No problem, Baz. Jake nodded. Hunter then followed Ben out of Willie's house. They walked into the council building, and the council sat before him, and Ben took a seat. Hello, Hunter, Mark said. Hey, guys, what's going on? Hunter asked. We have another favour to ask you, Sam snapped. Sure. Hunter said. My son thinks there's an old uh, off-road store an hour away from here. Down south. He wants to find out uh, what's going on. But night time seems to be the best time to do so. Use the darkest cover and all. Of course, this might be an opportunity for us. Willie told him. You want me to go with? Hunter asked. If you will go, of course. Jim questioned. Yeah, count me in. Hunter nodded. The team will meet you at the gate at nightfall, Billy told him. Sure. Hunter said with a nod. Night fell, and Hunter had geared up. He walked up to the gate and found Xander, Mark, and Ace. Hey, Hunter. Nice to officially meet you, Xander said, holding out his hand. Hunter shook his hand and nodded. I'm Ace, by the way, Ace said. Hunter shook his hand as well. Xander here has been examining some maps and might have found an off-road small convenience store, Mark replied. I doubt it's been touched. It's literally out in the middle of nowhere. We won't know until we get there, Xander said with a grin. Yeah, sure. Let's go. I'm excited. Hunter replied. The four of them left Human Town and walked down the main road for about an hour. Then they dragged themselves into the second hour and Mark sighed. We're not spending all night looking for this place, are we? Mark snapped. It might not be here, to be honest. Xander sighed with a slight breath of disbelief. Hunter scanned the surroundings, checked between trees and bushes, when suddenly he spotted a car in the distance. He grabbed Xander and pointed at the car through the trees. That's a lead, man. Nice one. Xander cheered. Then they all ran into the trees and ran up to the car. There on the left side of it was the small convenience store. Yes! Xander cheered. Mark then grabbed him by the shoulder and put a finger on his lips, signalling for silence. Everyone nodded. Everyone drew their blades and crept up to the store. Mark pulled open the door ever so slowly and the four of them spread out. They all turned on their torches and kept low and kept very quiet. They adventured through the small store. Once they advanced around the whole store ground, Hunter found the generator and started it, triggering the lights. Everyone put their torches away and walked around the store and realised that it had not not been touched. There were tools, canned food, bags of flour, and untouched dishes and utensils. Dude, you literally did it, Ace cheered. Sander stood there, trying his best not to split his face open with a grin. We have a van back in town. We can grab it and return in the morning and load it up. The canned goods can go in the emergency storage, the flour can go to the bakers, and the dishes and utensils can be given to the houses. Whatever else is here, we can just sort out, Mark said proudly. We can pack our backpacks with some of this stuff, show it to the council. Maybe we can convince some of the others to come help us to grab some of this jackpot, Hunter suggested. That's 
actually a good idea, Mark replied. Everyone started opening up their backpacks and started stuffing them with items when suddenly Ace noted a walker stumbling towards the store. Guess the generator brought some attention, Ace stated. You boys carry on, I got this, Xana said, pulling out his metal bike. He walked out of the store, stepped outside, and he walked up to the walker, and with a quick stab, he rammed his bike into the walker's head. The rotting body dropped to the ground. Then, as Xana turned around, something hit him in the shoulder. Blood soaked his top. Xander gasped out in pain. He ran into the store, and Mark quickly examined the back of his shoulder. There was a crossbow bolt embedded into him. Mark tried to see if he could remove it, but then suddenly another bolt hit the wall inches from Mark's face. We're under attack! Mark barked, then all four boys ducked down behind some of the shells. Mark pulled his bag closer to him and pulled out several hand pistols. What happened to no guns? Ace asked. It's a safety precaution. I was hoping this wasn't necessary. Mark snapped. He handed a pistol to both Hunter and Ace. Xander, stay down! Mark ordered. Ace, Hunter and Mark all clocked their pistols and Hunter kept low and peered around the corner. Gazing outside, he saw a few figures hiding in the bushes. They saw, he saw two of them... As they advanced, both of them were wearing thick clothes, clothes that you would wear if you were cold. Hunter aimed his pistol and pulled the trigger and managed to hit one of the attackers in the chest. The man fell to the ground. The other guy aimed his crossbow and fired it. Hunter threw himself back and the bolt hit the ground beside him. Ace and Mark both fired at the attacker, killing him. Suddenly, a third man emerged and in his hand was a Molotov. He lit the bottle and threw it up. Hunter stood and shot the bottle. There was a lake of fire that splashed on the ground, and Mark and Hunter grabbed towels and put out the flames as Ace aimed his pistol and fired it, killing the last attacker. Mark and Hunter stamped out the flames, sacrificing the towels. Ace ran outside and checked on all of the bodies. He searched them and collected their weapons. Then he dragged their bodies into a pile. Mark walked up to the window, which now had a collection of bullet holes. He used the handle of his machete to break the window. Then he and Hunter helped Xander climb out of the store. Hunter found some fabric, tore it up, and wrapped around the bolt embedded in Xander's back. Let us get home, get Xander sorted out, then we can rest up and in the morning we shall return with a van, Mark ordered. Then suddenly the three bodies all sat up and started climbing to their feet. Hunter walked up to the walkers and with his knife he stabbed each one in the head. Then he pushed the second one back and then inched towards the third one, minding the walker's nails and teeth. He stabbed it in the head, then he turned to the last one and the walker tried to lunge at Hunter, which made him stumble backwards. Ace jumped in, pulled the trigger and the walker's head burst open, its brain splattering all over the ground as the walker dropped to the dirt. Thanks, Hunter said. Eh, no problem. Ace nodded. Everyone reloaded, holstered up, and sheathed their weapons as they headed back into Human Town. They got back to town within the hour. Willie came out of his house with his wife Rita and found Xander wrapped up in fabric, his top stained in blood. They hugged him and exhorted him into the hospital wing, and Jim and Billy came walking down. We could not sleep knowing that you guys are out there, Jim told Mark. We have much to tell you. Mark replied. Jim nodded. Then Jim ran up the council. Hunter grabbed Jake and they all conversed in the council hall. Ace, Hunter and Mark told the council what happened when they got to the store. Thank you everybody for listening to this video and checking out the stories. Of course, there are plenty more where that came from. I encourage you to check out the rest of this channel where you'll find more storylines for you to delve into. But there's even more than that. If you check out the description down below, you will find a whole array of different Tiger Tales channels. Each Tiger Tales channel is made for a specific purpose and hosts a whole array of different types of storylines. So I encourage you to check out the other Tiger Tales channels and delve into a massive amount of storytelling by myself and the Tiger Tales partners. If you have enjoyed yourself today, then please subscribe to the channel as it does show your support. Now, of course, the whole reason why I'm doing this is because I'm passionate about story writing and storytelling. And, of course, you should dive into what you are passionate about as well. So, I shall end this video with... Roll with passion. That before we can... <laughs> Don't touch my Pringles. <laughs> Bye!